Toast, a short story written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's Website. And the winner is... Zoom freezes on my laptop, but I don't care. From the gallery director's opening comments in her awards speech, praising this year's portraits, it's clear my landscape has not caught the judges' eyes. Again, like all working artists, I've learned to channel disappointment into creative energy, and I toil on my large canvas landscapes that fill the studio and sweat paint and turpentine for my art. I share it, not for fame and fortune, though that would help my finances, but in the hope that the public will see the environmental message behind my dystopian landscapes. However, the public only sees winners, and year after year, competition judges have shown little interest in my landscapes. Once, before the wretched virus, when we could attend award ceremonies at the gallery in person, and not via Zoom, I overheard a pair of judges assessing my entry. His use of texture and colour impresses, but the subject is bleak, one judge commented to the other. Perhaps he's been too influenced by the old wave of eco-landscapists, the other judge responded. Influenced by? I wanted to explode and shake the judge by the throat. I founded the eco-landscapist movement, and of course the landscape is bleak. It's my warning to the world. Rather than resort to violence, I doused my rage with a full glass of champagne and grabbed another from a passing waiter. And I didn't win. Again. Last year, the gallery director emailed me after I delivered my landscape. Another technically brilliant and challenging piece, she wrote encouragingly. But I feel obliged to remind you, tides and tastes shift, and I counsel you to consider this with future entries. Future? I felt like spitting back in caps. There will be no future unless the world sees and heeds the message in my landscape. Instead, I swallowed the bile and emailed my thanks, and later I watched the director announce another insipid portrait as the winner on Zoom. This year, fueled by climate catastrophes and further isolated by lockdowns, I produced one of my starkest environmental statements, and I beamed with pride delivering the canvas to the gallery knowing it was probably my best chance of winning. Finally. Hopes were high that judges, artists and the public could attend the awards ceremony. I'm no social butterfly, and I prefer the solitude of the studio, surrounded by my brushes, easels and canvases, and the smell of paint and turpentine. However, I do like complimentary canapes and champagne, and the chance to watch the public reacting to my work. But the virus reared its ugly head again forcing the gallery to resort to another online ceremony, and I chilled a cheap bottle of wine for the occasion. Zoom refreshes on my laptop. The director has finished her speech. For a moment, I fantasised the tiled faces staring out from the screen, with glasses raised, a saluting me and my landscape. I smile, raise my glass, and acknowledge the winner's toast. I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's website. The Winner's Toast started life as The Winner, my August 2021 entry for the Australian Writer Centre's 500-word short story writing competition, Furious Fiction. The brief for August was, the first sentence must contain only four words, something must be shared, and it must include the words paint, shift, wave and toast. Longer variations were acceptable as long as the original spelling was retained. Fittingly, the opening sentence came to mind first. And the winner is... I toyed with the idea of setting my story around a writing competition, or a literary awards night. But rather than a writer, I decided to make my protagonist another form of artist, a painter. And this helped me place the words from the brief. Did you hear them? The abrupt ending of the first sentence suggested a Zoom meeting, and offered a device to write the backstory for the artist and award ceremony. It was also an opportunity to make a statement about the environment, a message the artist shares in his landscapes. As with the protagonist's paintings, my Furious Fiction short stories, including this one, have yet to catch the judge's eyes. However, like our working artist, I've learned to channel disappointment into creative energy. And so, with a few minor edits and a new title, 
I beam with pride when sharing this short story on Tall and True. I hope you enjoyed The Winner's Toast. You can read all my short stories, blog posts and other writing at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy my short story collections from the Amazon Kindle and Kobo online bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The next episode of Tall and True Short Reads will be in your podcast feed shortly. In the meantime, don't forget to check your feed or the podcast website, tallandtrueshortreads.com, for earlier episodes from seasons one and two. And follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it via your favourite app. Doing so helps me share my writing and message with other listeners. Finally, you can support this podcast by making a regular or one-off donation via the ACAR supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. And please tell your family and friends about Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writers website.